So How to Get Away with Murder Season 3 Episode 5 It's about Frank So the episode picks up where it left off Where um, you know We find out that Laura was the one That was inside the house But you know she was about to die And so we see a scene where Maggie was I mean where Maggie Was basically telling them You know kind of giving them some news But you know she You know was she's on, She only knows but so much And so you know, she was basically like, you know, I'll try to call you and tell you or keep you updated when I find stuff out. Um, and so then we see a scene where Bonnie gets a phone call. I'm assuming this from Annalise and she was like, you know, I got it under control, but Law was pregnant. So then we go back to, I think it was like three weeks earlier where Bonnie was going to, I guess she was in Coldport going to the funeral service. Um... And the director was basically telling her, you know, like, girl, we can, you know, do the nice funeral and the flowers and the casket and wop, wop, wop. And so when she go up in there and she look at the casket and then she walks out and was like cremate them. And then so she leave. Um, and so when she goes outside, she gets a phone call from Laurel like, hey, I just left the funeral home. And Laurel says, well, you know, if you see Frank, will you call me? She was like, if I see Frank, mind you, Frank was standing outside the funeral home waiting on her. And so. Once she hangs up the phone, she starts walking towards Frank and Frank had this look on her face like he thought she was going to hit him when she walked up to him. But she walks up to him and hugs him and was like, thank you. So then we get to the scene. I'm, a, I'm skipping around, but we get to the scene where um, they were back in uh, Sam uh, Frank's hotel room. And she was basically, you know, basically asking him, so... It's safe to assume that Frank is the one that shot Mahoney, which I think that's what everybody was thinking anyway. Ooh, excuse me, especially considering the fact that he skipped town right after it happened. And, you know, she was basically like, why did you do it? And he was like, well, I, because I didn't want her to come after me. And she was like, girl, you made West a suspect. That's why she came after you. Or that's why she hired old boy to come after you. And so he was like, well, maybe Sam was right about me. And um, she was like, you know, don't say that. And so he was like, maybe they should have just left me there. So we get to this going back 11 years prior. Girl, Frank had been locked up since he was 13. But, you know, basically uh, Sam was basically coming in to talk to him like, girl, you know, um, like, what's the tea? Your family. I think he said Frank's aunt had been friends with his sister Hannah since high school. They was like, girl, they've been worried sick about you. You ain't called them. You won't let them come visit you. Like, what's going on? Um, you know, I've heard that you up for parole and your family wants to do everything they can to get you out. And I, you know, and I, my wife is a lawyer and I believe that she can win your case. And so, I mean, I guess it's safe to assume that Annalise helped him beat his case. And so that may be another reason why he was so indebted to her, not only for the fact that he, you know, was responsible for her child, her unborn child's death, but then the fact that, you know, they're the reason why he, how he got, got out of uh, jail or prison, wherever he was at. Um, what else happened? It really wasn't much. Um, we also find out that Wes is about to meet Maggie's dad. I mean, when it kind of, I mean, I was kind of agreeing with some of them, like when they get to the point where you start meeting the parents, um, you know, where they want you to meet their parents, you know, it's getting kind of serious. I just hope that like, and I honestly feel like this is going to happen, that if Frank doesn't come back, if Frank doesn't come back into the picture, Wes is going to end up dumping Maggie to be with Laurel. Well, I doubt it because she's pregnant. And there's a lot of speculation going on whether it's Frank's baby or Wes's baby. But I don't think Wes and Laura have ever slept together. I know we've seen them in the, in the scene where they kissed or whatever. But I don't think they've ever slept together. Or maybe they just ain't never show it to us. But anyway. But at this particular time, I don't think nobody knows that Laura is pregnant anyway besides Bonnie and Oliver. Um, you know, Annalise is still suspended. She hasn't had her court hearing. Um... And, you know, some of the other students, more specifically that Drake dude, was making fun of it because he was, you know, somewhat played a trick on Connor and was like, girl, I'm, I'm supposed to be working on some kind of 
evidence or something and I got my arbitration and the other dude he ain't even started looking at it yet so do you want to trade and Connor was like yeah I'll trade I'll give it to you Monday but when he opens it up it's a picture of Drake he done pulled his pants down and sat on the copy machine and made a copy of his butt and so Connor and he was like well did that turn you, turn you on girl he was like girl this is sexual harassment he was like what you gonna do tell your mama last time I checked she still ain't got no job so yeah so then we get to this scene where Annalise was at the barbershop getting her a mean, a sew in, y'all. And it wasn't no, you, you know, and it was like some inches. It wasn't like them little short bobs and stuff that she'd be wearing. And so I, I, I'm assuming that she's known these women for a while. Mary J. Blige was the hairstylist. And I also saw Paula J. Parker that was in this scene. Um, and they were basically having girl talk, talking about, you know, Annalise is being greedy, you know. She, she she didn't want the white man. She didn't want the black man. Like, she need to make up her mind what she want to do. And then Paula J. Parker and the other chick was like, girl, you don't, you, you ain't with, with Nate no more. I sure like to take a ride on him or whatever. So, and then come to find out, uh, so Paula J. Parker, I guess, is kind of like the hoe in the situation because they was like, girl, she like to sleep around. Uh, we come to find out Mary J. Blige's character, she was like uh, a crack addict or, or did she say cocaine? She, I think she, no, I think she was on cocaine. Um, and, but, you know, she was able to get clean or whatever. And so, but this whole time she was at the beauty salon, she, you know, her mind is somewhere else because she, like, you could hear the women talking, like, in, like, indistinct talking in the background, but her mind is somewhere else because she got so much going on with, you know, trying to get a job back and all this stuff going on with the students, trying to figure out where Frank is. You know, all this stuff is going on. So, you know, her mind is just in a bunch of different places right now. So we go get go back into the past where um, we see Annalise is basically reading French rap sheet. And she was like, girl, I don't have time for this. Like all this crap you're doing, you, what make you think I can get him off? Um, and so Frank was, I mean, so Sam was like, well, at least go in there and talk to him. So we see where Annalise goes and talk to Frank. She was like, girl, don't you say nothing. I really don't, I really ain't trying to work with you. I'm just doing this for my husband. Like, the only way I can see you getting out of this is if you say, this, uh, plead guilty. And so they have this little back and forth. And she was like, you really don't want to get out of here, do you? Um, because she was saying something about sexual harassment on a female officer and causing a riot. And she was like, these are like dumb decisions to make when you up for parole. Um... And so when she's talking to Sam, she was just like, girl, I ain't got time for him. And Sam's whole thing is like, girl, he come from a, a bro, a jacked up family, like help him out. And so, you know, Annalise was like, it sounds more like you looking at him as a boy without a daddy. So then they go back into the whole thing of, you know, her not being able to have children, having miscarriages and wop, wop, wop. And um, it was just a lot. So we get to the scene where Annalise goes to... The AA meeting, and when she walked in there, the dude was like, well, do we have any first-time visitors? Mind you, she was already late, so it was obvious that she was a visitor. And so she was like, he was like, well, what's your name? She was like, do I got to say my name? And so she was like, Annalise, mind you, the president of the university is also in there. So I'm assuming that around this time, Annalise has found out that uh, she knows that she's been replaced. And then also the students find out that Annalise has been replaced. And so she was basically telling the president, like, girl, you hired Professor Erickson. Do you do you think that he would do a better job than me? She was like, girl, I can sue you and wah, wah, wah. She was like, girl, do you really think that the school board would be doing all this if they felt like you had a case? She was like, girl, fall back and stop trying to fight. It's not cute no more. So we have this whole back and forth. Uh, well, not back and forth, but these, the scenes with Bonnie and Frank. Where, you know, Bonnie was in the shower and Annalise, um, you know, calls her and was like, girl, um, because I think Annalise asked her something about the ashes and Bonnie was like, no, my sister's coming to take them. That's who's here now. That's who I'm with. And so Annalise was like, girl, enjoy your sister. So then we have this whole saying like, well, Bonnie's basically telling Frank, like, if you come back to Annalise and apologize, all of this will be forgiven. All of this will be forgotten. And I was just sitting here like, nah, girl you know just like the rest of us know it is not gonna be that easy um especially not only did he kill the baby but he knew about it and kept it from her all these years but then at the same time it's like he promised sam that he would never say anything so but so then but then i'm kind of like well you know 
when Sam died, you should have came forth and been like, girl, Sam told me to promise never to say this. And, you know, this is what happened. This is what it is. Um, and you, but, you know, Bonnie was like, girl, if you come back home, she'll forgive you. Just like you need to forgive her for sending an old dude out here to whoop your hind part. Because mind you, his face is still bruised up at this time. So later on that night when they was in the room or whatever, he was like, girl, I can't go back. Why don't me and you run away, start a family, we'll have some cute babies and whatever. He was like, if anybody deserves to be happy, you deserve to be happy because you've been because you're such a sweet, nice, genuine person. You always put other people before yourself. Like, girl, you deserve to be happy. She was like, girl, I, I, me and you could never. Be. And so but it didn't seem like he was just teasing. It sounded like maybe he like that was just something he said because she didn't respond. Because I think people that was also another question that was raised, like have Bonnie and Frank actually smashed before in the past? Um, so, you know, we got to the scene where Wes was sitting down with, uh, Maggie's daddy and he was, you know, asking him where he was from. And so, so then we get to the point of like, well, what do your parents do? And I'm sitting there like, you know, this is your first time meeting him. You should just be focused on him and what he do. And Maggie was like, girl, you doing like, girl, you doing the most. And so she was like, his mom died of cancer. And he never made it, and he never made his father. So I was, I'm wondering if that's the lie that he told Maggie, because mind you, his mama committed suicide, and he grew up in the foster home. Um, and so he was like, "Well, what kind of cancer she died from?" I said, "You doing the most." And he, West was like, "Girl, it's fine. She died from stomach cancer." Um, mind you, Gavin come up in there trying to. Turn, I mean, not. Not Gavin Drake come up in and trying to turn up because he was like, girl, which one of y'all stole my laptop? I went to the bathroom and it was sitting right here and now where it said. So he walked up to Laura. He was about to go through her bag. Michaela was like, girl, you need to fall back. He was like, girl, I know you ain't trying to step to me because the only reason you here is because you're trying to find you a rich man to lay up with. Because we know you ain't going to finish college. And she said, girl, she called him all kinds of little balls, no balls, wimpy, whiny, excuse of a man. And she said, well, you better walk away. And he walks away. And Asher and Laurel was looking like, I know that's right. Because mind you, Michaela ain't never been the one to like turn up and, you know, go off. She's always been kind of like mild mannered and kind of reserved. So. What else happened? So Annalise, you know, she does get get rid of all her liquor. She had liquor stored everywhere. I said, girl, you an alcoholic for real. Like. But, you know, of course, she was having some struggles. Though she go back in the, in the trash can and get that vodka. She get drunk. Mind you, most people, when they trying to get, you know, get sober, they pour the drink, pour the alcohol down the drain first and then throw the bottles away. Because I, I knew she was going to relapse. But then not even that. When you're trying to, you're not supposed to stop cold turkey. You're supposed to just, you know, do a little bit at a time. Because you, because when you try to do that, you, you, you're going you gonna to relapse. And so, you know, she had done got drunk and left the voicemail on Nate's phone like, girl, you should be lucky I kicked you to the curb, honey, because it's a whole bunch of crap that I'm dealing with. And and now you don't have to be a part of it. So next time you see me, do me a favor and tell me thank you. And then she hung up the phone. Now, I, and we all know she missed Nate. You know, she got too much pride. Um, what? She seems like one of them type of women and, and, and. We can see that and how she operates in the courtroom and with other men. She's that type of woman that she wants to be able to walk over, you know, a man. And, you know, Nate's not that kind of man. Like, he's not that type of man. Like, girl, like, put my foot down. Like, I'm in, like I'm the head nigga in charge. But at the same time, he's not going to let you talk to him any kind of way. And so, you know, but Annalise, you know, so maybe if she can find her. You know, a, a little limp wrist man, a yes, a yes, you know, a yes man. Maybe sh she'll be more happy then because, you know, she can run all over him. So now we're back to the scene where uh, Sam is with Frank. Excuse me. In the interrogation room, basically, basically talking to Frank like, girl, you know, you shouldn't be in jail for what you did. You was just 13. You didn't know what you was doing. Why, why, why? Frank was like, girl, I might have been young when I knew what I was doing. This was premeditated. You feel me? Like I planned this out, you know, I had it written down in my little notepad. I you I had everything planned out and you know everything was supposed to go as smooth as I wanted it to go. But unfortunately, you know, when I did what I did, it didn't work. He was still alive. He was just like, girl, I knew what I was doing, like 
I didn't really have no reason to kill him other than the fact that he was yelling at me, yelled at me for not washing the dishes, bro. So he was like, now look me in my face and tell me that you still think I should get I should get out. Sam was like, you should get out. He was like, well, girl, you about as crazy as I am, if not crazier. Sam was like, no, he was like, you even more of a sociopath than I am. He was like, no, because sociopaths don't cry over the things that they did. So he was basically like, girl, we're going to get you out of here. So then we get to a scene where Frank is having a nightmare. So Bonnie come down there and wake him up. And she lay beside him and was just like, girl, we should move to Oregon. They got sand dunes and it rains all the time. So we can stay in the house and do whatever we going to do. You know, we can even go hiking and walk, 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 walk. Like we can just do stuff that'll make us forget everything that we've been through. Um, and so then after a while, they is like they have this little moment where they staring into each other's eyes and they just rubbing on each other's faces to keep caressing each other. I'm sitting there like, well, girl, is y'all going to kiss or what? But then at the same time, I was kind of like, well, I hope y'all brush y'all teeth before y'all lay down because like y'all both look like y'all breath is a little bit tart right about now. But, you know, they would, you know, get it in, start doing the bump, 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 bump. And in, in the and after all that happens, then she texts Laurel and basically tell her like Frank is fine, he's okay, but keep your mouth closed. So in the midst of this, we find out that Michaela actually did steal old dude's laptop. Um, and Oliver hacked his computer and basically found out that he was actually the one. Uh, Drake was the one that put up them flyers about Annalise Keaton, which you know. Looking at it now, it's I kind of wouldn't be surprised because he was a little bit too excited about the fact that Annalise had been suspended and had been replaced by another professor. Now, I was thinking that it might have been Maggie. Now, something still don't sit right with me about her, but, you know, she, you know, she's she's been good to to, our, to my boy Wes. So, I'm you know, I'm going to let her slide. Um, so, I don't know how they're going to deal with that situation. Um So now it makes me wonder, do he know something? Because like I said, you know, way back when the show first started, you know, the person that put up the flyers has to be somebody that knows something or maybe he's just going off with the stuff that he heard. So, you know, we, we never know. Um, you know, Nate and Atwood still messing around. Nate finally listens to the voicemail and he basically tell her like, girl, I don't care how good I'm giving it to you. You better keep your mouth closed because all this crap that I went through last time somebody found that I was dating a lawyer, I ain't got time. So, um, Wes comes over to Annalise's house. She drunk as a skunk, okay? She, you know, going off. He come in the house like, girl, I thought you, what are you doing? Like I, like I could have sworn you said you was going to go to AA meeting and stop drinking so you can get your license back. Now, mind you, if the only purpose for her to quote unquote stop drinking is to get her license back, she's not gonna stay so she's not gonna stay sober for too long. Like you have to get clean because you want to get clean, not because not for because you're trying to get your job back or you're doing it for somebody else. You got to do it for yourself and do it because you want to. So, but eventually she done got drunk to the point where she's throwing up all in the toilet and she's in this drunken stupor. Like, girl, you shot me, you hated me, like. What's like what it is, and he was like, "Girl, I could never hate you. You've been protecting me all this time." So then she asked him about Maggie, like, "Girl, is she good to you?" He was like, "Girl, she very good to me in the bedroom and out." Okay, so eventually he take her to the bedroom and 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 she pass out. Um. Where is Michaela from? Because I know when she was saying whatever she was saying and, and, and uh, Asher was like, now put your, your your southern twang on it. And she was like, what you talking about? And they were like, well, it kind of came out a little bit when you was going off on Drake. Which I'm going to have to go back and watch that scene because I didn't really notice like an accent on her. But they was like, he was like, it's a, it's a mix between Louisiana Gator chasing and, and Georgia Peach picking. And she was like, girl, we done broke up. But I'm confused because I'm like, how y'all broke up if y'all not a couple? Y'all just been bumping. Okay. Let me just, here's my theory. Bonnie burnt down the house. And Wes is the other person. Um, the, the, the other person that was dead up under that sheet inside the house. Now, 
The reason I say this is because, uh, well, let me go back. The students were in class basically trying to go over whatever it is that they want to go over. Um, we still don't know where Michaela's from, but she was basically like, girl, you know, my family, my real family is trash. Good, you know, I ain't got time. You know, I don't even want to claim them. So, you know, stop talking about it. Move on. So then Wes sends a text to Laura like, girl, meet me in the hallway. So when they go out to the hallway, he was like, I need, I think I want to break up with Maggie. I'm getting tired of lying about her, you know, lying to her. I mean, we all so messed up and whatever. Annalise is worse. Laura was like, girl, well, do whatever you have to do. And I think at this particular point, he was going to tell her, like, girl, I really want to be with you. You know, I break up with Maggie and Frank is gone. She was like, girl, Frank ain't gone. So then we get to the scene where they were at Annalise's house and Laura thought she was about to sneak out. And Anna, but Annalise comes back and she was like, you know, they were like, well, what's going on? He was, Wes was like, Laura need to tell you something. He was like, well, can't Laura speak for herself? She ain't never been the type of woman to let a man speak for her. So he was like, it's about Frank. So then Laura was like, girl, Frank is in cold port with Bonnie. He called me when I was with my daddy and told me that you tried to have him killed. You tried to have my man killed, girl. Don't make me have to come up out these earrings because we can scrap right up in here. But then that's when Bonnie walk in and we're just like, Laura, like, what is you doing? And so then we get back to the scene where the house is on fire and whatever. And Bonnie is on the phone like, girl, Laurel is pregnant. I had no idea. And then we see Connor calling. I mean, Oliver calling Connor's phone the first time. It goes to voicemail. The second time, a woman picks up and was like, girl, this is Trishelle. He was like, well, who is Trishelle? She was like, um, well, no, she said, I'm looking for Connor. And she was like, well, is that whose phone this is? It was sitting up under my couch, honey. And it was vibrating my booty. So then that's when Michaela picks up the phone and was like, Con Oliver, what's the tea? He was like, girl, where you been? You ain't heard. Girl, Annalise's house burnt down. She in jail. They found Laura's body and she pregnant, girl. She pregnant. And then that's when the pan, I mean, the screen pans over to the TV. I'm sorry. The camera pans over to the TV and they see where it says unidentified male body found in house fire. Now. Annalise decided to go through with her lawsuit. She was like, girl, I forgot the stuff that she listed, but basically like, girl, you you ain't even did nothing with these flyers, but you using the, the you know, using the what the college money to try to get me disbarred. She was like, girl, listen, I'm going to sue y'all. You either you give me $50 million, but, you know, if you let me get my job back, I can make all this go away. The president was like, girl, you ain't even got no license. She was like, don't worry about that. I got that. So, you know, after all that, the, the, the uh, president was like, you know, I'll make the phone calls right now. And so they, you know, the president tries to have a heart to heart with, with her. Like, girl, how you doing? Like, we were just in AA. Like, I know, you know, you're trying to get sober or whatever. Like, you can't do it alone. We all need somebody to lean on. And they were like, girl, I ain't got time for you or your click clack, honey. Make them calls. And then she steps, walks up out the office. Bonnie goes back to the hotel. Frank done dipped out. Um, so they show Annalise the laptop and they basically like, girl, we should show this to the school board and walk while she was like, girl, listen, because they still thinking that they about to get found out. Annalise was like, girl, this is not the DA's office. This is not the school board. This is some poor little boy with, with a little peen and little balls. You know, he trying to play a joke. She was like, girl, we still safe. So when she goes to Drake's apartment, she come bomb rushing up in there like, girl, I ought to sue you and you'll mess around and get it spelled or even go to prison. This is slander and defamation of character. Like, do you know what I would do to you in the courtroom when you're going to try to pull something like this? How, what made you think that I wasn't going to find out that you was the one behind it? So he gets scared like, girl, what you going to do? She was like, that's your decision. But then he eventually comes in the, in the room like, girl, here go my arbitration outline and he walk out. Did they ever get... Yeah, he did get his laptop back. This episode is good, y'all. So that's my theory. I think that Wes is the, is, the, is the other person that's dead in the house. Because like I said, it had to be somebody that was dear to Annalise for her to break down like uh, like she did. Now, at first I was thinking it's Nate, but after this scene and the way they construed it. But you know how to get away with murder. They make you think one thing and to be something else. But for right now, that's my theory that Wes is the other person that was the, the person that's dead. But anyway, thank y'all. I'm going to try to be more up to date with this review because uh, I know I'm late. Um, basketball wise, I think I'm just going to start with the reunion and, and keep it moving from there. And then I think I'm up to date with American Horror Story. But anyway, that's all I got to say. I will see y'all in the next video. Peace.